Oh man, this was the stealthiest of stealth drops. Mostly because only a handful of sites actually reported on it, and when it was released a few weeks back, no one really even talked about it. So, naturally, your strategy guide show gobbled this one up really quickly, and I must say, it's already got a place in my top 5 strategy games of 2023 so far. Anyway, enough faffing around, let's get into Redemption Reapers. Redemption Reapers is the newest strategy release by Binary Haze Interactive. If you're familiar with the beautiful, stoic action platformer Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, then you know their work. And honestly, for a newer studio, they once again hit it out of the park. Keep your eyes on these guys, everyone. Anyway, in keeping with darker, gloomy stories, Redemption Reapers follows the tale of the renegade band of warriors called the Ashen Hawks as they tirelessly repel a massive invasion from the Wart, a disturbing, demon-looking orc monster group that have completely ravaged the human lands, leaving a massive, bloody trail of desolation behind. And honestly, if that doesn't set the tone for how bad things can get in this game, then I don't know what to tell you. For me, the big thing with this game is its cast. Not only do you have an amazing voiceover work, Michael McConnelly is always nailing it as a commander type, but each character has a fairly interesting backstory and feels really unique in their portrayal. Yeah, I mean, you got your stoic knight and a wild spirit man, but the way that they wrote these characters along with the voice work just, mm, oh my gosh, mwah, bravo. Getting into the visuals, this game definitely leans into the darker colors and styles, but maintains a certain realism that really vibes with me. Designs are just fantasy enough to keep it in fiction, but given just enough reality where you can see how it might actually work. This extends into the full CGI videos where it just looks nice, even on the Switch. However, there are a few performance things I need to address soon, so just sit tight. As for audio, again, so nice. The English voice cast in this game is top notch and there are enough songs in the game that really just help set the mood and make you pumped up and depressed when you need it. It's just really well presented. As for performance, this is where I need to mention a few things. Uh, naturally, the Switch isn't as heavy and powerful as the PlayStation, so graphics are likely scaled down a bit. However, I do feel that when it's in docked and undocked, the game is fairly crisp overall especially if we can compare it to other games like Monarch or Caligula 2. Battles are pretty much as fluid as it gets. There might be some slowdown when using a special attack, but honestly, I can't tell if it's a performance thing or if it's a deliberate slowdown, like a la Bullet Time Matrix. I'm gonna go off the ladder on it because everything else just runs really smoothly. But I do wanna mention that this game also loads very quickly. <laughs> I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but after playing Fire Emblem Engage so much, this game actually is pretty, I think it's actually pretty optimized to play on the Switch nicely. The biggest issue for me, however, is those aforementioned CGI cutscenes. Now, these are pretty, like really pretty. So pretty that they are completely unoptimized and straight up glitchy. Like sometimes the parts of the screen just start jumping or glitching during these scenes. It's almost as if there was a problem during the rendering process and some of these frames were dropped. I don't feel like it's a Switch thing. It kind of feels more like the video team might have dropped the ball. I did see some recent patches come off as I'm recording this, so I'm not too sure if it's been addressed or not, but just be warned, the game itself is smooth, but sometimes those um, CG cutscenes tend to be a, a bit too glitchy. For being one of my favorites so far this year, this game is actually really straightforward. However, it doesn't really tell you much, which is a bit of a no-no. The game itself is a turn-based strategy game where you field your full team of units on a square grid with the intention to complete an aspiration, read objective, to complete the map. These aspirations can change as the map changes based upon how you do. And these can range for anywhere from simple escape the levels to eliminate all enemies and even protect the VIP. To do this, you have your Hawks. You start with two on your team, but eventually you'll get more and your team will grow in size. Each Hawk has a sort of hybrid purpose role and it's up to you to field your full team every time 
and to use their skills in a very synergistic way to win. You have Sarah, the ninja thief type, Glenn, your warrior knight, Lou, your Kukalion, Urz, the Val barbarian paladin, and Karen, the archer cleric. There are other members that may or may not help out in battle based upon the map, but I don't want to get into any more potential spoilers, so just leave it at that. Each of your hawks has a series of skills that they can unlock as they level, and each of their skills can be ranked up using skill points obtained after leveling. These skills are fairly related to the aforementioned archetypes that I just listed. Also, the game does have a simple stat system that connects base stats to combat stats. Just to go over them briefly in order, Strength basically increases your damage. Speed increases your evasion or chance to you know, dodge. Dexterity is your hit or your accuracy. And defense is, well, defense. And resistance is strange. <laughs> I think it's either a combination of magic-based stats, uh, which seems to be output for heals, but I think it might be more used for magic resistance as some later game enemies have magic skills that they use. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to say resistance is probably magic related. Needless to say, though, based upon the Hawk's previous archetypes, some are better optimized with certain preferences and biases towards stats. For example, Sarah being a ninja rogue obviously likes her speed a lot. Therefore, when you use them in battle, please use a lot of caution with your placement and your positions because, um, yeah, it's not too good if uh, Karen goes a little bit too far up and gets smacked with a, a massive axe to the face. In addition, we're talking about weapons and axes, weapons in Redemption Reapers have durability and they can break after too much usage. Now, I've tested this quite a bit and it seems like skills, when using a, a specific skill, not a base attack, causes a bit more wear and tear. But honestly, if you use any regular attack, a counter attack, a support attack, it will basically impact your durability. Should your weapon break, you can repair it after the battle. And if you breaks in battle and you continue to use it, you basically can keep it equipped, but you don't receive any of the damage or secondary buffs that it can award you. So basically it's a good idea to have multiple options or multiple weapons in your inventory for your characters. And you always want to make sure that you have more than enough charges to drop in for an attack. As for battles, let's talk about them a little bit more. During battle, all Hawks have an action point gauge that determines the amount of skills, or I should say actions, they can use. This includes defending as well. The AP, or the action point, caps at 10. However, under certain circumstances, this could be extended higher to allow for more actions to be used, or at later levels, a special limit break-esque skill to be used. The conditions for increasing AP seem to be contingent on the character, and the duration of the battle. For instance, I've seen Urz get extra AP for blocking attacks like a champ, and Lou gets some for just knocking out KOs left and right and doing a lot of counters. So just be very mindful of what you have your Hawks do. Again, those archetypes are there for a reason, and to use them synergistically is the main point of this game. It's also important to note that all actions except move and wait use AP. This includes a defense. But you also have one additional action which doesn't use AP, and that is your Draught. Each Hawk gets basically one Draught per paddle, and they function like a potion to recover health. You get one, and it's not used as an item, it's used as like a charge special sort of skill. So you can't trade your Draught to someone else who's already used it. With that said though, you can restore Draught usage by touching one of the magic seals, which are these little green swirly things in a level. Touching that not only recovers any life you've currently lost, but it also recovers any draughts that you used, which again, just refreshes the one you got. Now, um, on that note, I'm talking about things around maps. Let's talk about Redemption Reaper's map construction. Honestly, it's fairly straightforward, but also really original. Um, Size-wise, it's not too big and it's not too small, so you're not gonna be spending a whole lot of time per battle, and it's really nice in that regard. You also, have to, you also have to deal with obstacles, such as fences or walls in between, and you do have height restrictions, though it does seem that height really only works from top down, not so much down up. So I know that might seem weird to say, but I do know that some cases there's a lot of games where if you're like at a lower level, you still have the chance to shoot up, but you're kind of limited. In this game, I've only ever seen people shoot down and never shoot up in terms of elevation. 
Finally, maps also have a lot of goodies that you can grab. You have relics, which are basically uh, lore notes and documents that you can pick up. Doing so gets you some background information, but most importantly, it can give you stones, which could be used for upgrading, which I'll get to in a moment. And you have treasure chests, which have items. These can reach you from anything to new weapons, to accessories, or to more stones and items you can sell to get more cash. So you definitely wanna make your time, take your time, get the relics, get the treasure chests. Honestly, it's more important to get those items than to have like a fast clear time. Now, um, just to mention one last thing with battles and maps, Positioning matters a lot in this game. Of course, you can check the positions and ranges of enemies by hovering over them and hitting, I think, the A button. However, one point that Redemption Reapers has is there is sort of a automatic slash choosing uh, follow-up attack scenario that you can do. Basically, uh, if you attack an enemy and another one of your allies is on a flank, after your first attack connects, you have the chance to press one of the other four buttons to have another member of your team attack. So positioning matters a lot, as if you want to knock down enemies in a single go, you're likely going to have to move your characters in such a way where they can rely on doing consistent follow-up attacks with each other. This applies to every unit, as long as they are um, on the flank of an enemy, except Karen, the archer cleric. Claire, Karen's is actually locked behind a skill, so you're gonna have to actually use your skill points to unlock her um, her follow-up attacks. So just be mindful of the positioning and you probably wanna focus on getting Karen's skill unlocked because it is very, very, very helpful in many missions. Of missions, the game functions in a very linear way, like classic fire emblems or languishers. Uh, you'll win a mission, and then you'll be taken to a following kind of preparation screen, and then you'll move into the next mission map. So you'll just do a mission, prep, do a mission, prep, and you'll just continue on that way. Now, I know for some people this is a bit concerning because people want to do previous maps, like what if I missed one of my items, or what if I want to grind a little bit? I'll get into grinding in the next section, but it is possible to revisit previous maps to pick up missed relics and chests. However, these skirmishes, as what they're referred to as, open up after a certain amount of time. It's not immediately from the get-go. You have to make a, quite a bit of progression to open it up. And as you progress through the story even further, old maps can become locked out. So I highly suggest fully clearing every map the first time you're there. Just A, helps with your resource management. B, if you make it a little bit too far, then you may have the chance to miss out. Don't worry though, the game does give you a, a warning if you're about to transition to the next phase where you might lose map access. Um, and again, these services are able to be accessible through the prep screen. Speaking of which, let's talk a bit more about what you can do outside of battle. Now, the prep screen is, again, really straightforward. You have your reference section that you can look at all your notes you picked up. You got your merchant where you can buy and sell weapons and items. You got your skirmish, which I just talked about. And then the battle prep itself, which is like your character organization deal. In battle prep, you can adjust inventories by equipping or removing items that characters can or may not be able to use. You can equip accessories to get bonus stats and effects. You can increase your skill level by using the skill points and ranking up, you know, your, um, your special techniques. Or you can use bonus XP granted from rankings of previous battles to train and level up your Hawks. Regarding levels, this is extremely important. Stats are randomly given every time a character levels. The number of points allotted to a single stat upon leveling is one. And anywhere from two to all six stats can level at the same time. So just to reiterate that, strength can only ever increase by one per level. However, if you level up, your strength, your dex, your speed, and your defense can all increase at the same time. Typically, the game average averages about two to three stat ups per level. However, this is always random and you cannot rely on the same stats or even the same amount every time. So for example, you can make a level, you can get plus one to strength, plus one to HP, and then let's say like you have to reset the map, you get that same level again, you could get plus one to speed, plus one to resistance, completely different stat ups. So it's random every single time. 
Items do exist that allow you to permanently raise stats upon use. However, these are extremely expensive and very, very hard to come across. Finally, the last thing I need to touch on is the upgrade system that I mentioned previously. The game has one and honestly, it's really poorly explained. The TODR is that you use stones and gold to level up your weapons. Different stones have a certain affinity for a weapon type. So for example, if you're leveling a dagger for Sarah, it may take only two dagger stones versus using three spear-based stones. So the type of stone is written within its flavor text. So you definitely wanna check it out before you, you know, start throwing things in there and upgrading weapons. Typically upgrades increase things like hit and attack by one per level. Sometimes you can have extra effects unlocked depending on the type of weapon it is and what weapon you're upgrading. Honestly, in principle, unless you find a really good weapon that has some bonus effects like extra to crit or extra to evasion or something like that, you're really better off not upgrading any of your weapons, at least early on, because you'll be getting a lot of new weapons from those treasure chests in the maps as long as you're doing your job clearing them every single time. So I would use the upgrade seldomly. In all, the game offers a classic, more traditional experience of strategy RPGs, which may or may not be suitable for you. Newcomers will likely find the systems easy to understand. However, we'll probably dive a little bit too deep into it, thinking that it's a good way to get ahead, which, as I will explain in the next section, is a good way to shoot yourself in the foot. Veterans will likely see the game's mechanics as straightforward and easy to pick up, but more than likely to be reserved with using them, given what we're going to talk about right now. Redemption Reapers has no difficulty modes, and it's important to note that the game in many ways functions like a roguelike. As mentioned earlier, you will clear map after map with no real chance to grind, at least early on, as that first stretch of skirmishes unlocks, I think around like chapter 10 or so. Um, and you won't really have any good chance to try to get things like extra gold through the grinding. For this reason, Without the fact of having grinding, resources are extremely scarce, especially gold. Furthermore, remember that weapons as you use them have durability and can break. Hence, you will need to be stingy and sometimes really stingy with what you do and what you spend and how you do it. Upgrading those low tier weapons might seem like a good idea early on, and, you know, if you upgrade them, you even probably think you want to repair them after you've used them. But this is a great way to dry up all of your gold and reserves super quickly. Repairs always cost more than just buying a new one. This is even if the weapon is not upgraded, repairs always cost more. So you need to really weigh your options with resource management. If you find a good set of knives that have like a special bonus to a stat, keep them, maybe upgrade them maybe go ahead and, and uh, repair them if you need them. But basic things like the, the dirks you get at the beginning of the game or the basic hand axes, if they run out, buy a new one from the merchant, it's gonna save you so much money later. So don't go ham on upgrades and, and overspending your money. As for the battles, I would like to say that this is frustratingly challenging, <laughs> which works for me. Depending on the map and enemy types, you may continue to get swarmed by waves upon waves of enemies. Enemies might try to wait for you to reach a certain point within range and try to bum rush you. This means that you need to be very careful, but you do have the potential to pull, kite, and move systematically as a group, which is honestly a fairly good approach to most maps in this game. However, if by chance you decide you want to extend too far, or maybe you're trying to grab an item out of the way as you're trying to maybe make a VIP move in one direction, you might end up getting an unlucky crit or an unlucky miss, and then you have to find yourself for starting, which, yeah, I think can be quite frustrating. And this is especially the case of one of your Hawks gets KO'd, which don't worry, if they get KO'd, they won't perma-die, but grinding levels isn't really something easily done in this game. So if you lose one of your characters, it might be worthy just to restart the whole map so they get a bit more extra XP, which can help them make the campaign a bit more easier for you. And if that was enough to consider, the AI in many cases does not mess around. They will target whatever is easiest for them to target and kill. They will bypass closer targets in favor of getting more kills and more damage on weaker units. Again, positioning is everything in this game. If you move too far ahead, you gotta, you gotta put Urz up, defend, and wait. 
If you need to move through a big mass of enemies, just try to kite them towards you. Try to pick off as few as you can one at a time because sometimes even if they're moving towards you, waiting would be a good idea just to make sure they get within range and you can bomb rush them and then jump to the next one. Rushing and guns blazing won't do you well, unless if you're loot, but even then you just have to be very careful. To sum it up, the game is challenging from a very early, it's, it, the challenge is very evident from early on. Um, and it continues to get more challenging as you progress and work your way through the game. I would never say it's unfair to be honest, but it's not friendly for newcomers. You really have to consider your actions in this game, even from like chapter three, chapter four. Veterans will probably enjoy the challenge and will enjoy what the game offers as it does require a lot of care and finesse. But again, for newcomers, this is something you may want to be a bit careful about. I feel that I've given a fair amount of hints throughout this whole video so far, but in this section, I just want to cover two important things. First, with skills. Focus on skills that reduce damage and a boost evasion first. The exception to this is Karen. Focus on her double tap and supporting fire skills. Once she has those at max or at a high level, then she can basically start one-shotting enemies, which is super helpful. As for the other, well, remember how I mentioned that setups are random every time you level? And you can get one point on anywhere from two to all stats upon leveling? Well, not much you can do in battle. However, you can get your Hawks close to leveling during the battle and then use the training system to level them up, which means save scumming. Yep, drop a save right before you do any training in the battle prep menu. If you get two stat points, reload and try again. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter to scum for specific stats. It's more about scumming for as many as you can get. If you do this, I recommend three stat points, or if you wanna put in that extra effort, then maybe four. But, you know, make sure that you do this before you decide to upgrade your skills, because remembering that a level up gets you two more skill points for the skill rank. So. That might help to get the skills that you really need. Plus, if you get as much stats as you can, it will definitely help you survive those battles. All in all, I am having a great time with Redemption Reapers. It has a charming cast, nice aesthetic, and a really challenging AI, despite all my frustrations, has just given me drive to come back and to get my victory. For newcomers, I can't really recommend this game. Um, I love it, but I can't recommend it, as I do feel it comes in really hard on the deep end, and it's likely going to discourage a lot of players who aren't used to strategy games or just the genre itself. If you're willing to go slow, and you're willing to really think it out, good luck. Just good luck. <laughs> I know you can do it. For veterans, I highly recommend this game on the other hand. It screams old school strategy and it definitely delivers an experience that is just well worth going through and learning. It's just worth it. It's worth playing it if you're a veteran. Play this game. Redemption Reapers is awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for checking out the video. A uh, bit of a long one here, uh, but I wanted to get this one out a little bit quicker before the Fire Emblem stuff came out because this game really needs more love. I don't really think anyone's talking about it, so. Please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on Redemption Reapers. Is it something you were looking at? Something you're thinking about picking up? Or if you've played it, let me know your experiences as well. I'd love to hear what you all have to say about it. With that said, this is Show, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers!